One of the biggest mistakes I see people make in sales is to overcomplicate, overcomplicate their proposition, and also to assume that other people are interested and are going to pay attention. Um, and in fact, one of the easiest things you can do to get your sales messages clearer is assume that everyone you're talking to is very tired, not very interested, and a bit hungover. It will force you to get your messages clearer and clearer and clearer. But one of, the, one of the reasons for having really clear messages is that any successful business, any great business, should operate on a model of being magnetic and pulling people towards it, rather than having to sort of push the, the business out and the messages out at other people. If you imagine a classic uh, uh, scenario when you're on holiday and you might be walking along a, a seafront on holiday and you know there's loads of restaurants and somebody will come running out with a menu and they come running up to you and they say hello sir hello miss would you like to come into our restaurant are you hungry and almost everybody says no no we're not hungry and they keep walking even though they are hungry and even though they are looking for a restaurant because there's something about that dynamic of a business coming and pushing itself at us which we don't find very appealing as human beings but then imagine another kind of restaurant on another kind of holiday where you're walking past all those other restaurants and you see this other restaurant on a corner, it's slightly tucked away in a side street. And you look at the restaurant and there's a bit of a queue outside and there's a bit of a red rope for VIPs only. And you think, this looks great, this looks interesting. And you go up to the person at the door and you say, hello, we'd like a table for two, please. And the person at the door says that terrible phrase, do you have a reservation? And you say, no, we don't have a reservation. But inside, most of us are thinking, but I really want a reservation. I really want to come and eat here. And the person says, well, we might get you a table. It's going to be a half an hour wait, I'm afraid. And would you like to wait at the bar and have a drink? And so many people say yes, because that other restaurant feels so much more attractive. It feels so much more compelling. It's what I call a magnetic business. It draws you in rather than pushing itself at you. Now, there are lots of different ways of doing this. But one of the uh, most compelling ways is to be a business that really deeply, deeply, deeply understands your clients, your prospective clients, and how to speak their language, how to talk in a way that really resonates with them and really gets an emotional connection with them. In another video around putting the sales pitch and sales presentation process together, I've talked a lot about how important it is to get an emotional connection with people. And the reason is that most of us tend to make decisions emotionally first and then we'll justify them rationally afterwards. It seems to be deep at the core of human decision making. One of the reasons that happens particularly for your clients and your prospective clients is that they're all busy. They don't really have all the time necessary to make totally rational decisions. They want to know very, very quickly, does this feel right? Is this going to be good for us? Can we actually trust you. So there are a few ways of doing this. One is to do some competitor analysis to look at how other people are talking to your clients and we'll look at that in a different video. A second way is to actually talk to your clients and understand your clients and particularly the problems that they are trying to solve. What are they trying to achieve in the world? What are they trying to get done? What are the biggest challenges on them? What are their clients like? How do they have to talk to their clients? How important are things like speed and quality more than price and so on? So if you can focus on the world of your clients, the problems that your clients have got, and particularly the problems that your clients are trying to solve, you'll start to see the world from the point of view much more of your client rather than just yourself. You start to become a bit more like that restaurant that brings people in because you start creating the right language the right environment that feels welcoming for your clients, rather than being that kind of business that runs out with a menu and pushes itself at other people. On a very, very simple level, look at a website of any small to medium sized business anywhere in the world, and you'll see there'll be a phrase on the homepage, something like, we were founded in 1979, we're the best at this, we're brilliant at that, we've got 200 clients, and it's all me, 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 me. It's all talking about themselves which tends to be very unengaging language, very uninteresting language. It's much more interesting when you can talk to a client and say, well, we've got to know you a little bit, we've been looking about what matters to you, and one of the things we've noticed is that stability and structure and reliability are really core things that you need from a supplier. If you start talking in that kind of language, you're talking directly to the problems, to the needs that your client has. They resonate well with that language. A second thing you can really focus on is 
not how you do what you do, not the actual thing that you're supplying or the actual products that you're working with, but the value of what those things bring to your client. So on a very simple level, I'm a keynote speaker. Most of my world is I go to conferences and I walk onto stages and I speak to people. But being a public speaker, that's only a process. There's no real value in that. The value is in what people get from me being a speaker. And in terms of being a printer, well, there's not necessarily any value actually in having a business card or having a brochure. Those are just processes. The fact you can print them is just a process. The real value is in do they look good enough? Are they going to be there on time? Are they going to represent me at my best? Am I going to be able to get as many as I need? Um, will I be able to rely on you to do a thousand of them consistently? Or are the ones in the middle going to look dodgy? Right? Th those are uh, more valuable things that will be turning over in clients' minds. I have a phrase that I use with all of my clients to try and get them to really focus clearly on value rather than just talking about the processes that you use, how you do what you do. And that uh, uh, phrase is very easy and you can fill it in. It's a, it's a half a phrase and you've got to fill in the dot, dot, dot. Um, and the phrase is this, at the heart of what I do is a simple idea, dot, dot, dot. At the heart of what I do is a simple idea, dot, dot, dot. There are a couple of words that are really important in this phrase. So one is heart, so it's got to be right at the core. What do you as a business actually do? What do you really deliver to clients? Because printing, for example, is just a process. And then the second really important word is simple. Can you boil this down into a form that anybody can understand, that somebody at your client can understand quickly and they can repeat to somebody else at a client? Can you get it down to a form that's compelling and interesting and memorable? When I was a full-time performer, I used to be a full-time magician, I did it for a long time, and I used to go and entertain people at weddings. And it was one of the loveliest things to do, I used to enjoy entertaining people at weddings very much. And almost every wedding couple I ever met in advance of their wedding, when they were thinking about booking me, when they were thinking about employing me, would always ask the same question. What kinds of tricks are you going to do at our wedding? Now, if you think about that, that's, a, that's not the real question they're asking. That's just a process question. They're really asking something much more fundamental. They're asking, can we trust you? This is the most important day of our lives. Can we trust you? Now, if I don't understand that, I'm going to answer at the same level, the level of process. So they say, what kind of tricks will you do? And I say, well, I do card tricks and coin tricks and mind reading tricks. But I hope you can hear there's not really any emotional connection there and there's no value there. There's no reason why the client should leap to buying something from me. And they're likely to say, thank you for telling us that information. We'll have a think about it. We'll speak to some of your competitors and we'll probably go with whoever is the cheapest. But if I use uh, this technique, at the heart of what I do is a simple idea, something more interesting happens because the wedding couple will say to me, what kind of tricks are you going to do at our wedding? And I'll say, well, it's not really about the tricks, you know. At the heart of what I do is a simple idea. I'll make your wedding much better than your sister's was. And they'll laugh and smile. I hope you laughed and smiled as well. Now, it's a, a very light-hearted example, a very easy example. But there are a couple of things that are really important in that example. First of all, you understand it instantly. You don't need to make any effort to understand that answer. You get it straight away. It speaks to the world of someone getting married. Secondly, there's nothing in there that's complicated. There's no process because I need to get the trust first. I need to get the, if you like, the emotional connection. So it's very similar in the world of every industry. When people are talking to you about deadlines, timelines, what kind of machines do you use to print? What kind of technology do you have? Always remember those things are processes and keep asking yourself the question, what is the value behind all of those processes? And wherever you can with your clients, try and look at your websites, try and look at your own brochures, try and look at your own sales meetings and reduce the amount of process and talk much more about value. If we work together, this is what you will get. When I look at the homepage of your website, the first message I should see should, for me as a potential client should be what I will get from you. The first message I should see shouldn't be why you are amazing to yourself. So try and reverse those things around if you can. So value, 
Uh, following value, of course, you'll be able to talk more uh, about value the better that you know your clients. And not just their problems, but really how they think, really how they see the world. So the last idea I want to leave you with is this idea of building, if you like, a, a customer avatar, a client avatar. Many, many successful businesses do this and they're very honest about doing this. Um, the story goes that Amazon, even in some of Amazon's meetings, they have a literally a cardboard cutout of some of their target clients. Then you really want to get into the minds of your clients as much as possible. So create fake personas for them. You can draw them on bits of flip chart paper and stick them on the wall. You can give them names. You might have uh, 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 someone who's, uh, uh, you know, an Anna and a John. You might split them by gender or by age or by industry. But get to know uh, particularly what are called the psychographics, the way that someone thinks about your clients. So digging into their problems, as I mentioned earlier, is a great thing to do. But also, what ages do they tend to be? What's their educational level? What kinds of things do they read? Where do they hang out? Do they go to exhibitions? Do they go to trade shows? Do they go to networking events? Do they go to award ceremonies? Are they really stressed and don't do any of that stuff? Do they get all their information from Facebook? Or do they spend time looking through LinkedIn? How do they think? Because these things will help you to tailor your language and really think specifically and talk specifically in the language of your, web, of your uh, ideal customer. So next time you're looking at your websites, your brochures, how you run your sales meetings, keep saying to yourself, is this definitely targeted at this person, at this customer avatar? Do I really understand the problems that they are trying to solve? And am I speaking and writing on my website and speaking in my sales meetings in terms of the problems that they're trying to solve? And make sure that you're speaking as far as you can in terms of value rather than process. Don't talk for hours and hours about the printer. Talk about what the printer's going to do for the client and why they're going to get value out of it. I hope that's been really useful for you and good luck going out in the world and get some compelling message together. <laughs>